Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Git. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look on how to use the git ignore file and why we should use it in every project based on git. So if we access one uh, repository, whatever repository on GitHub or Bitbucket or another like version control website, you will notice that pretty much every repository comes with a bunch of these weird files with the dot uh, on top, like the dot before the name of the file. Uh, in uh, For an Oberdin system, a file with a dot at the beginning is a hidden file. For GitHub or for the majority of the software or the development software or compiling or deployment software, all these kind of like applications that do something automatically, a dot file is a sort of like specification or a file that you use to set a specific configuration for a specific type of action. So uh, in this case, I'm looking at the AWPS, my WordPress starter theme. We have a bunch of these files that, for example, the JS inter C is like a sort of file configuration to tell my JavaScript hinting software on Sublime Text to ignore some specific configuration or use some specific configuration. The Travis YAML file is to connect automatically with Travis, that uh, website that automatically compiles, checks your repository to find some errors and deploys your repository on a web server, whatever you want. The file that we're going to take care of it today, that we're going to learn how to use is the git ignore that pretty much every GitHub repository or like every repository has. And if you remember in the past video, when we created our git repositories on GitHub, One of the questions during the initial form was, do you want to create a git ignore file or not? And we said no, because we want to create it from scratch. So a git ignore file is basically a file that you use to say to git to ignore some specific files or folders, because realistically, you will always have in your project some folders or some specific files that you don't want to commit to git. For example, if you're running a test or you're just uploading a bunch of like images that you don't want to upload to, to Git, you don't need to keep track of those images, or you have all your passwords and your access stored into a file in your project, and you don't want to share that file on a GitHub repository, you can do it, and you can tell Git to completely ignore some specific file. So let's see how we can do it. Let's access our Git repository on uh, our terminal and let's access our Git repository on our code editor. Uh, right now, I don't have a Git ignore, so I can simply create a new Git ignore file and I have to call it exactly like .git ignore without any extension. Automatically, my Sublime Text installation recognizes this is a Git file, so it applies the proper icon. And the structure of a git ignore file is pretty simple. Basically, there's no structure. If you type the name of the file, for example, about.html, git will know that it has to completely ignore this file. If you type a folder name, for example, if we have a folder called CSS or source, we can say source and then the star that it's a global type, like all the files inside the source folder, they need to be ignored. Or you can specify if, for example, we have a file inside the source that we want to keep, but we want to remove all the other files, we want to ignore all the other files, we can specify an exclamation mark and then specify in source, I want to maintain the style.css. And that's basically it. The other thing that you can do, you can use like the star symbol to apply like a global search to all the files. They have a, a zip extension. So if I want to commit any file with any zip files, I can say star dot zip. Sometimes the git ignore is used to actually ignore the files generated by the operating system. So I can just simply say dot ds store file. So this file is going to be completely ignored. It's not going to be pushed and so on, so on. So this is the standard and really simple syntax of a git ignore file. Of course, you have the ability to write also comments with a pound or a hash key and you can 
write your comments here. This is not gonna be like interpreted by Git. It's no problem, it's just a simple comment. So you can specify whatever you want. If we access the AWPS repository and we take a look at my Git ignore file, you will notice that it's pretty long <laughs> because I, I wanted to be sure to include all the files that I wanna ignore and I wanna commit all the files that I need to commit. So here I'm basically say to ignore all these packages, it doesn't matter like probably could happen I could have one of these packages in my local folder because I'm doing something I don't want these to commit it um, I want to avoid to commit my personal environmental file but I didn't specify a dot star file so I'm committing the environmental dot example file because it's totally fine logs xql os generated files like the ds store or the thumbs.db that it's when we have images all the cache files and here for example I'm saying to ignore the vendor folder for composer because I don't want to commit all my composer packages you can install them through composer but those don't have to be committed by the default in the repo, but I want to commit and I want to include the vendor folder that is inside assets and JS. So I put the exclamation mark on top. And that's pretty much it. Nothing else to say and nothing else to describe. So the first thing that you have to do when you have a git ignore, it's first commit that git ignore. So let's say that I have a new file and this new file is called passwords.txt. This is just an example. I have just a simple text file and here I have the admin that is root and my password, for example, is 123456. It's not true, but whatever. And then I have my uh, remote IP address, I have my SSH, or I have something like protected, something that is personal, I don't wanna share it. You should definitely not do it, but it's just an example, just for the sake of demonstrating how the git ignore file works. So let's say yeah, you need to maintain this file in your working folder with all your information and you don't wanna share it on git. So let's create a new file, a git ignore, and let's just simply write the name of the file that we want to avoid so password dot txt and if we want if you want to be fancy let's like ignore my password file that's it so now if we type git status we shouldn't have the passwords.txt though so that's an error because we have the git ignore we committed something's not wrong uh oops sorry um probably you're screaming at me through the computer through your screen but it's passwords.txt so sorry that's why it was keep tracking on it so now if we save the git ignore file and we do again git status we're gonna have a modified git ignore, but if you notice, we're not gonna have the password.txt anymore because even if we modified it and we didn't add that, we didn't commit to our repo, our repository, we just have the git ignore. The passwords is completely ignored. So let's say um, git commit dash am and this is a shortcut to git add everything and commit and write a message directly just one simple uh, command fix it typo and git ignore that's perfect so now if i say git status i have nothing if i update this file so updated blah, 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 some like gibberish and i save this file usually uh, get you recognize that the file changed but it's completely ignored and that's amazing so Let's do another experiment for multiple files and for folders. If I specify that I want the source folder to be completely ignored, I just simply specify source, let's save it, git status, I have a git ignore, so let's say git commit again, and let's put a message, remove the source folder from REPL, perfect, git push, Awesome. Now, if I create a new folder and I write it source and I specify inside this folder a file called scss. Oh, well, like style.scss or another one, a new file uh, uh, colors.scss, whatever other file you want. And if we type git status, 
we're gonna have absolutely nothing, even if we create a new folder and two files, because we have in the git ignore the specification of ignoring the folder source, because we don't have any extension, so git recognizes this source, it stands for this source folder. That's perfect. Now, if we say, for example, we update the git ignore file and we say that out of the blue, I want to completely ignore the about.html. I don't want to include this file anymore in my repository. I can write about.html and save it. If I say git status, of course, git ignore is there. Let's add it. Let's not do anything else. If we update the about and we duplicate the paragraph, and this is another paragraph, we save it and we do git status again. You will notice that here, oops, I did git had before, sorry, but you will notice that here we have the about.html that it's modified. So git recognizes that that file, it's still in our repository, it's still in our uh, staged git, even if we updated the git ignore file, because we implemented the declaration to ignore this file after the file was already inside our git repo and was already committed and also pushed to the origin. So that's kind of like uh, complicated. So how can we fix that? We have to simply clear the cache of git and re-add the files and tell git this now is the new setting. So to clear the cache or to clear just one single file from the cache, we need to just simply specify git remove dash dash cached and then specify about.html. Let's hit enter. The about.html was removed. Now if we say git status, we're gonna have a git commit, because I already had it is, to have the about.html deleted. And if we commit, and we just simply update it, git ignore to remove about page, and we push to our remote branch, Get status, that's perfect, everything is committed. If we now update again this about.html, we revert it back or we add something here, whatever, and we do again git status, nothing is there. So we remove this file that we previously had before the git ignore from our cached in our local git and look what happened to our remote repository. If we access it back and we refresh it in the master, we're not gonna have in the master any more the about page, and here we have the proper commit that we just did, update the git ignore to remove about page, because we committed in our previous push the delete command of that file. So we said to git just delete this file because I don't want it in my cache, I don't wanna track it anymore, I wanna remove it completely, and that's perfect. So um, that's pretty much it. This is like a super quick lesson about the git ignore and the ability of removing, not tracking files and completely deleting from your cache and your remote repository a file that you don't want to track anymore. And of course you can do it with folders, you can do it with hidden files, you can do it with pretty much whatever. And the git ignore is really important because it will help you to maintain your public git repository or a git repository, even if it's private, but it's shared between multiple developers, free of all that garbage code or like useless files that you don't need to commit constantly, that you don't need to push constantly to your remote repository. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.